Hey there, it's Social Communications. Welcome back to another review, this time of the 2015 comedy action flick, Spy. Now this is a movie that I saw the trailer for, multiple trailers. There was maybe one or two laughs, but ultimately it didn't look like a very good movie. And I only decided to check this out because a good friend of mine didn't mind it. And I know, and my mom actually was curious about it, so I decided to find a link for my mom and then, you know, watch it with her and my stepdad, and I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent. I thought it was better than I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was a great movie. I wouldn't even say, I honestly wouldn't even say I really liked it that much. I just thought it was, it was there. There were things about it I liked. I just didn't like the entire film. I just thought it was, at best, average. One thing that I thought that wasn't average was the opening credit song, which I thought was really impressive. The opening credit song, Who Can You Trust by Ivy LeVon. Very powerful song, great vocals, really fantastic song that I hope gets nominated for an Oscar. It, just because it's, it was in a comedy doesn't mean it's a comedic song by any means. I mean, this song was a very heartfelt tribute to Bond songs of old, and it would feel right at home in Spectre. It was that good. I mean, I really liked that song. That, to be honest, that's the most epic and memorable the film gets, is Ivy LeVon's Who Can You Trust in the opening credits. Um, but there were some few other things I liked about the film. Uh, I, I love Jason Statham. He stole the show. He was hilarious. It was a, it was really fun to see Jason Statham in this movie. Melissa McCarthy, she had her moments. I like that she played just a regular gal for the most part. Uh, she didn't turn into her obnoxious swearing, you know, self until uh, about halfway into the film, and it made sense. Um, and uh, the supporting cast was good. I mean, I like Rose Byrne. She's becoming quickly becoming one of my favorite actresses. I loved her in Neighbors. She was good in this as well, as as the slutty dolphin trainer. And uh, you know, there's a few other Fifty Cent had a cameo that was surprisingly not that bad. It was kind of funny. And uh, Allison Janney was great as usual. Uh, she didn't have a lot to do here, but she did a good job of what she had to work with. Um, and Jude Law was great. I really liked Jude Law. I mean, he was really believable as an action guy. And there's some good bits of action and some fight scenes with him, especially in the beginning of the film. Um, and Paul Fake's direction was there. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to get into a little bit more in depth on my pros and cons on Spy. I'm going to explain why uh, certain pros are pros for me and why certain cons are cons. Uh, let's start with pros. Jason Statham, he is a huge pro for me because he's, it was just hilarious. It was, he never really had done a film like this before. Jason Statham had never really done a comedy until Spy. And it, his whole role is, in a lot of ways, it's a parody of himself. And it was really nice to see him do that. And he pulled it off, and it was hilarious. Uh, most of the really funny lines of dialogue are from Jason Statham. Uh, I'm just going to start quoting off some Jason Statham quotes from Spy. You really think you're ready for the field? I once used defibrillators on myself. I put shards of glass in my fucking eye. I jumped from a high-rise building using only a raincoat as a parachute and broke both legs upon landing. I still had to pretend I was in a fucking Cirque du Soleil show. I've swallowed enough microchips and shit them back out again to make a fucking computer. This arm has been ripped off and completely reattached with this fucking arm. I don't know how that's even possible. I mean, medically, during the threat of an assassination attempt, I appeared convincingly in front of Congress as Barack Obama. In blackface? That's not appropriate. I watched the woman I love get tossed from a plane and hit by another plane mid-air. I drove a car off a freeway on top of a train while it was on fire. Not the car. I was on fire. Jesus, you're intense. <laughs> and then he has some more lines where he's like, Nothing kills me. I'm immune to 179 different types of poison. I know because I ingested them all at once while I was deep undercover in an underground poison ingesting crime ring. <laughs> so yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then the whole scene at the end. <laughs> Where he thinks he's going off and you know riding off on a boat into the you know on the ocean, 
And he's like, wait a minute, this is a fucking lake? Uh, so, so yeah, uh, I really love Jason Statham in this. I also like the little bits where he shows he's a character that thinks he's a badass, but in reality, he's not as badass as he thinks he is. He has some badass moments, like a little bit where he fights some guys, but for the most part, he's pretty clumsy. He's not nearly as badass as he, he really thinks he really is. I mean, a lot like uh, Jack Burton, A Big Trouble in Little China. A Big Trouble in Little China, Jack Burton, he thinks he's this ultimate badass, and and there was even in, in a lot of ways he's just out of his league, and uh, that's what makes that's a big part of what makes Jack Burton so endearing. And Jason Statham's character Rick Ford in this is endearing in the same way. There's even a scene that I reminded me of Big Trouble in China, where he gets his his jacket caught on a, a doorknob and he falls, knocks himself out, and during the big moment, like he thinks he's going to have this big moment where he's going to be the hero. <laughs> he just gets his, his his jacket caught up on the, the the handle of the door and just knocks himself out. Which reminded me of the scene in Terminal in China where Jack Burton shoots at the ceiling and knocks himself out. So, yeah, Rick Ford, great, good character. Jason Statham was great. I honestly wish uh, that he had more to do. I wish there was more of Jason Statham. I, I didn't mind Melissa McCarthy, but I would have I would have actually loved to have just seen a film with Rick Ford. The, that's the spy. Rick Ford, Jason Statham, um, but yeah, Jason Statham was great because he was played against his role, against his type. Uh, Melissa McCarthy, I thought she was a pro as well because she, like I was saying earlier, she played a regular, regular girl, regular uh, person for the most part in the beginning, a Susan Cooper, a character you actually felt for because she was stuck in a desk job behind the computer, being the voiceover, trying to help lead, you know, these other, uh, she was the voice for Jude Law, she was the voice in his ear, and he kind of used her, and you felt for her, like, she's an agent, but she's not put out in missions because she's not what, she doesn't look a certain way, or she, or, and, and so forth, so, it was a bit of discrimination, and it, you definitely did feel for her, and, um, and a few of her colleagues as well, uh, and when she has to be tough, she does an alright job. I mean, I think Melissa McCarthy can be funny with the foul mouth. I did really like the Cagney and Lacey line she had. Cagney and Lacey insult. That was pretty funny. Uh, it was it was it was it was it was pretty funny to see the scenes between her and an actor that I swear to God it's the same actor that was in Kung Fury who played the the uh, Nazi with the with the blonde mustache. Who, you know, they had the whole uh, dialogue where it's like, no, this is a real Aryan mustache. No, 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 this this is a real Aryan mustache. Uh, so it was the same guy. So I thought that was funny to see that actor in uh, a big budget uh, film, a $65 million uh, theatrical production. Um, so yeah, and Melissa McCarthy, and, and it made sense why she was, her, was being foul mouthed and pretty intense later on because she was playing, babe basically playing a role. She was being the bodyguard for uh, Rose Byrne, who is another character I loved. I thought I thought Rose Byrne did a great job as uh, Rania Boyanov. I thought she had really good chemistry with Melissa McCarthy, and I, of course I love the scene. It's like, you look like a slutty dolphin trainer. <laughs> it was just true. She really does look like a slutty dolphin trainer in this movie. And I love this scene, which is in the trailer, but I like it, where between Susan and Rania, where she's like, Susan's toasting uh, Rania's mom. He's like, well, here's to your mom, to my mother, and to you. And here's to you. I mean, you may never be as wise as an owl, but you'll always be a hoot to me. <laughs> what a stupid fucking retarded toast. You're delightful. As are you. <laughs> so, so there's some fun to be had with this film, definitely. I, I, I ultimately thought it was all right. It was average. I guess you could say I liked it, but I just didn't love it. That's that's how it is with a lot of average films for me. I mean, it's it's a movie's not gonna make my top ten or anything. It's a film that I probably, if I find it for cheap, I might pick it up. I mean, it might be worth that. Just a little, you know, a little cheap uh, pickup for like two bucks or something when it comes out, but. I, I definitely I, there were a lot of things that I, I chuckled at some some little things I didn't mind and I liked a lot of the performances for the most part there's some that I, I didn't care for 
But Melissa McCarthy, I thought it was a pro. She was a pro because, she, once again, I thought she played against type, just like uh, Jason Statham did. She played a regular person, and then she's put out in the field. And then I liked how she was actually scared at first. And then she gets more and more comfortable with it, and she has some actual pretty decent fight scenes. Uh, one in the kitchen that I liked with one of the uh, one of the spies the you know bad guys so to speak and then I like the scene where she's she gets on the motorcycle and she goes off a ramp and she's like I'm so badass and then she lands right in the wet cement and then just the awkward moment where the the motorcycle was just slowly going through wet cement so there are definitely a lot of a lot of decent gags in this movie I don't think they were like laugh out loud hilarious I mean there was a few like the Cadney Lacey insult I laughed pretty hard at same thing with the scenes of Jason Statham, but the rest of them are just, they're all right. I mean, they're they are nothing super funny, but they definitely do put a smile on your face. Um, I really liked, uh, like, going back to Rose Byrne, I thought she was great, too. Uh, really stretched her uh, acting muscles, so to speak. Uh, I love her ability to be a chameleon and do whatever a certain role wants her to do. I'm really curious to see how she would do with serious acting now because she's just a she's great in comedies. I would say I would say her performance in this is good. I like it, but I would definitely say I definitely do like her performance in Neighbors a lot more. But she was still pretty really solid in this. Jude Law, I I really liked as Bradley Fine. He was he was believable as a Bond like a super agent. And uh, he actually, the choreography that he had in the fight scenes were actually really cool and really well done. And um, yeah, he really sold me. So definitely like Jude Law in this. And it's also an inspired casting choice. Jude Law really isn't an action guy. It really hasn't been in very many action movies. So it was nice to see him try to be, you know, do his, give the action his best shot, so to speak. And I think he did a pretty good job. Uh... As for the rest of the cast, I mean, there's really, you know, Tim Alice and Janney I liked as Elaine Crocker, the boss, pretty much. She didn't have that much to do, but what she had, she did a good job with it. And uh, Michael McDonald had a really bit role as Patrick, who's pretty much this film's version of Q. And I had, I had fun with him. He was only on it in the film for a little bit, but I, but I enjoyed him in the film. So... That's th those are the pros for the cast. Now for other things, uh, some of the action was actually pretty good. I thought it was a, a step up from the action in the Heat. Now I would I actually prefer the Heat over this because I just think it's a better paced film and I, I think it's actually a little bit a lot funnier, uh, mainly because of Sandra Bullock. But the action in this film is definitely a lot better than the Heat, and it's actually surprisingly exciting and fun to watch for a comedy so it was one of the better action comedies I've seen lately uh, I just think the main issue I have with it which I'll get into in more in depth later is the pacing that's a huge problem for me and some of the jokes just don't don't hit uh, definitely hit and miss for me um, and I thought you know and I'll get into some more cons later but I, I did I did like for the most part I did like a lot of the action that was in this Reminded me of stuff I'd seen in the 21 Jump Street films, like 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street. I would definitely say I like those films more than this, but the, the action did remind me of those. Um, anything else? I would say the editing by Dean Zimmerman and Don Zimmerman was, was pretty solid for the most part. Uh, and the direction by Paul Fagg was was good. Uh, it wasn't anything that's really spectacular, but it was definitely competent, and it wasn't anything that was glaringly bad or anything like that. Uh, you could definitely tell the director knew what he was doing. Now, but that's really, and, and other than the little bit of the song, the main song, uh, that was in the opening credits, and the soundtrack choices I liked. I have always liked Paul Fagg's uh, soundtrack choices. He chooses some new songs, and and modern pop and old old you know sort of older songs and he's very eclectic and I've always liked the song choices he's he's uh, made for his films for the soundtracks um, so that was a plus for me the score itself wasn't really much I don't remember it at all by Theodore Shapiro um, but yeah anyway 
Now we get into the cons. Big con for me, reason why I just think it's an okay film at, at best, is the pacing. It just feels like it just drags at points. It just goes from scene to scene, just kind of lackadaisically, and it just it just doesn't have a, a lot of energy to it at moments. Like there's moments where it's full of it's got some life and it's funny and it's fun to watch, but then there's other times it just it just it's like a slug and it it really brings the film down. I thought the writing it was just it was okay. I mean some of the jokes were all right, but some of the jokes just didn't didn't hit. Um, the, they're, that's how it is with a lot of comedies, but a lot of great comedies have more hits than misses, and this, this for the most part, I don't, I mean, there wasn't any, there's a lot of misses for me personally, so, um, so I thought, you know, the writing by Paul Fagg, I thought could be a little bit better, I also thought the story was pretty boring, it was a pretty boring story, uh, there, for a spy movie especially, uh, there's some, uh, there's some double crossings, some, you know, agents who are double agents and this kind of stuff in there done that, uh, some shipment of a nuclear missile and all of this. And it, it was just, it was just kind of like, it, I, I just felt that it was missing something. I felt it could have been grander. I felt it could have done something more with the concept. I mean, you have like a, an opportunity to be like a spy comedy and, it just—it was about as satisfying to me personally as I Spy. I, I like—I—I am I, actually one of the few people in the world that actually don't mind that movie with Owen Wilson and Eddie Murphy. But um, it just felt like there could have been more gags, definitely with the gadgets, more fun to be had with that. And they just really didn't go very far with that. You had the the pen or whatever with the blow dart. You had the little bits of like the laxatives and and the hemorrhoid wipes and all of that but and that was funny but there was more funny uh, cool gag sight gags in the end credits uh than there was in the actual film and a lot of the missions that were showing in the end credits actually looked like a lot more fun than the mission that they actually had so uh, i understand it's a first film i know they're starting and maybe trying to start a franchise but Go big, man. I mean, there's no reason not to. I know it's a lower budget of film, but that's no excuse for not having more to the plot. Uh, plot doesn't really, especially in a spy film, doesn't necessarily need need a two hundred million dollar budget. So I thought I thought that was definitely a problem for me. It's the, the story, the pacing, and then maybe and pacing pacing is huge for me in a lot of, when it comes to films. Um, so, and other stuff, like it's mentioned before, Theodore Shapiro's score isn't really that much to write home about, nothing really that memorable. I, I love the song by Ivy Levon, but that's really about it. Some of the other soundtrack choices are, are nice to hear in the film, but nothing I really hear, or nothing I really listen to in my free time. Um, Robert Ewerman does doesn't really do a, that great I mean cinematography is there but it's nothing spectacular there's nothing about the cinematography that's really uh, mind-blowing or really surprising or, or sterling or, or spectacular or spectacular at all um, and I thought the some of the performances I didn't care for N mainly I did not like Bobby Cannavale as Sergio De Luca I hated that character. That character was annoying as hell to me. It wasn't funny. It was just one gag that just didn't work the first time, and they kept forcing it. Oh, oh, he's just a horny guy, horny Italian guy who loves to grab Mr. McCarthy's ass or grab her tits, and it, I'm going to fuck you, Susan Cooper. It just, it just, just really didn't. It didn't land very well to me. I thought that guy did a lot better job in Ant Man playing a normal guy, and he's completely unrecognizable in this. I thought he was Hank as there. That's so much. I thought he was. I thought he was. I thought it was the same actor from the Birdcage. You know, Agazaria from the Birdcage. Uh, but it's it's not the same. It's it's uh, Bobby Cannavale. I also uh, actually that Sergio De Luca is a bad guy. Actually, my bad. I got it mixed up. It's a different actor. It's Peter Serafinovich as Aldo. My bad. Rewind. Good. <laughs> But anyway, I didn't care for Bobby Cannavale either. So he played the one of the main villains, Sergio De Luca, this really 
rich guy. And he was just, and it, yeah, I honestly, he, I still think he was unrecognizable in this comparison to his role in Ant Man. But I thought in this, he was just forgettable, very forgettable, rich guy with a Brooklyn accent, completely forgettable character, nothing funny about the character, just just useless in a lot of ways for me personally. But yeah, it's Peter Serafinowicz as Aldo, who I thought was was uh, was um, Hank Azaria from the Birdcage. That's the character, grabbing asses and grabbing tits and just a pervert and just didn't work at all for me. Uh, just didn't find it funny, and that's the main reason why that's a huge con. Uh, Richard Brake as Salsa Dudev was all right. He was there, but he just really didn't do much. It was pretty, another pretty lame villain. Um, so yeah, uh, that's th those are my cons for uh, Spy. I can't really think of any other cons to be honest off the top of my head. Uh, big ones are pacing. Biggest one is the story it could be more engaging, more interesting, uh, and some of the performances and some of the jokes just hit. Why just miss wide right for me personally, but I, I at the end of the day, it's all right. It's there. It, it's it's a passable movie. It's passable entertainment. It's it could have been a lot worse, and I'm definitely thankful that it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I, I really don't know what to say about Spy. Except it was a rate out of five stars. I would give the film. Three out of five. Like I said, mediocre. It's there. It's so-so. It's average. It's an average film that I liked all right. I didn't love it. and But, you know, it, it was it was a time waster. It was worth watching once for Jason Statham and for a few jokes and for some decent action bits. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely no Austin Powers. If you want action and comedy, I would definitely uh, recommend Austin Powers, especially when it comes to uh, spy spoofs definitely would recommend that. I'd even recommend Get Smart, which I haven't seen in a while, but I remember that doing a lot more of its concept than this film did. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching my review of Spy, and I will see you guys later. See ya.